All right, good morning and happy Thursday. It is so great to be together once again, at least virtually. Um, and as we're gonna learn today, I'm sure we'll, we'll infuse some new life and some new value into um, these virtual spaces, these virtual workspaces and workplaces that we've all been um, enduring for the past year. Um, and per perhaps for a little bit longer, we'll just have to wait and see and be patient, but um, it's great to be here together today. I'm excited to welcome Melissa Davies and Nicole Murray from Clark and Associates and Solutions at Work to be with us today to share their expertise um, and their time in the trenches, uh, wor working virtually and making the most of that experience. I, I'm sure we'll all benefit from it. Um, really quickly, uh, just a couple of announcements. This actually is the very last webinar in our Chamber EDU Business 101 series, and we will be back with a brand new series in June. But until then, I have a couple things for you guys. One, um, we've got all of our Chamber EDU sessions available on demand, including the one that we did um, with Melissa and Valerie a couple of days ago. Um, all of those are available to consume, rewatch, share on YouTube. So I encourage everyone to do that. Um, hopefully you'll find something valuable and something that will bring, uh, bring a little bit of vitality to your teams as we move forward. I particularly recommend um, the sessions on personal leadership and our, our three-part series on strategic planning. Those were all gems that I think all organizations and individuals can benefit from. Also, until we see you again for Chamber EDU in June, we've got our Green Business Training and Certification Program, which is going to be every Thursday from April 15th until May 20th. Um, now, there are a lot of great benefits to this, um, but I think two of the primary ones are the fact that, um, you know, roughly 70 to 80% of all workers and consumers say that they value working for and working with and purchasing from uh, businesses that are green and that have an environmental focus. And so um, this opportunity is free. This training program is free. Lunch, in fact, is provided. So you get a little something extra out of the deal, um, as well as becoming uh, a green, a Nevada green certified business, which is a great, uh, a great uh, gem to have in your crown, as it were. Um, the other thing I want uh, to remind everyone about is HR Bootcamp. Now, I think la at last check, we had about six spots left in the HR Bootcamp. So if there's anyone who is thinking about taking this course, now is the time to jump in um, before it is too late. We're getting started on April 8th, um, and we'll do four sessions together that focus on best practices for your employees, employee handbook policies and procedures, onboarding, retention, um, goal setting for your employees. And then of course, we're closing everything out with some really timely and important HR guidance uh, when it comes to COVID-19. So please uh, get your get your folks together from your organizations and, um, and see if anyone can attend. It's going to be a great, a great opportunity. Um, so with that, I'm just going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to turn things back over uh, to uh, Melissa and to Nicole to get started. Yes. Hi. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We know your time is valuable. This is Nicole Murray with Solutions at Work. Uh, we are an HR and payroll solutions company. And I'd also like to um, uh, introduce you to Melissa Davies with Clark & Associates. Good morning, everyone. As Nicole said, I'm Melissa Davies with Clark & Associates, and I'm a, um, a licensed insurance agent for um, Clark & Associates, we specialize in employee benefits. I'm also the uh, current vice chair for the Chamber of Commerce and a, a past president of the Northern Nevada Human Resources Association. Great, well, today's objective is to interact and to synergize. We are faced right now with working in one form or another of a virtual workplace. And the pandemic has forced many employers to rethink and reimagine their own work uh, places and actually their workforces. It is our job to, to re-energize. This is an open forum, meaning that we want to hear from you. We want you to share your ideas with us and your peers and how you are keeping your teams engaged. Yes, so feel free to jump in with your ideas as we go along. And of course, any questions. So uh, when Melissa and I initially signed on to lead this session, we took a, a look out there to see what the main talking points were regarding engaging 
virtual employees. What we found were concepts related to collaboration, connection, and engagement. And we'd like to spend a little time breaking this down with you. So why is collaboration important? It's true. Some employees make it look so easy while others struggle struggle with being remote. I know that I personally had a hard time adjusting to everything about being virtual. And if, if you notice, I, if I look this direction, it's because I cannot figure out how to get my viewing screen onto the screen with the camera. So I apologize for that. But um, timing, when to get on a Zoom, when to wait, what happens when, when there are logistical or technical problems? What is the best lighting? Where should my computer be? What background? Can people hear me? Is my dog barking? Um, I, I, we considered it all. While on the call with others, that made it look so very easy. Well, enough time has passed now. I, we have tried to solve all of these problems. We'd like to hear from the group. What are some of the struggles that you were called upon to work through with individuals or even teams, if that is the case? So it looks like we've got a couple people on the call. I don't know if any of you have had to manage people remotely um, and have any you know, feedback or struggles that you dealt with. Um, but I know personally, um, of course, you know, social, social isolation is definitely one. Um, um, I think you know, it's, it, it's hard when you're, when you're stuck at home and you don't have that, that interaction at the water cooler. Um, that's definitely something that um, some people thrive with and some people um, you know, really struggle with. Hey, Mel. Um, this is Valerie Clark. I I can I can very much attest to uh, initially back a year ago when we were a team that were so uh, engaged together. Uh, we met every single week, face to face had lots of interaction, really supported each other physically as well as um, emotionally and you know our work life was very connected and it was kind of a big shock for us to all of a sudden all have to work from home and uh, it was a struggle and I think my fear as a leader was that my team would fall apart on uh, you know not just physically fall apart but emotionally you know, it was a tough time. And so I was so worried about us emotionally falling apart. And I didn't know how to deal with that at first. So um, I just used my gut instinct, which was, okay, we're going to do Zoom meetings. If we don't do them at least once a week, if not twice a week, um, I felt like we, we were in jeopardy. So that's what we started doing. If you recall, um, we, we, you know, we did face-to-face -face Zoom meetings and, and just really talked. We may have had no business to talk about at the time, but we talked, you know, what's, what's happening? What I ate, you know, well, here's what I had for breakfast this morning or, you know, just whatever. Here's what I'm doing in the morning to get some exercise. Here, you know, I'm walking the dog. Oh, look at my dog over there. You know, we just talked and we kept it connected. And um, it was just kind of a gut instinct that I had because I didn't have anything else. Um, and I think so. I think the pressure is very real for those of us who run companies. Um, so that, that was our experience, and I, I somehow we we survived. <laughs> well, I think to add to that, yeah, I mean, you know, our industry can be very stressful at times, and you know, having our 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 colleagues around to to vent to, or um, just you know, bounce ideas off of, just you know going into each other's offices, there, there's, there's something to be said to that. And when you're stuck at home, you know, you can't really complain to your kids about insurance or, um, you know, talk to my husband, his eyes glaze over, you know, so it's really um, important to, to have um, opportunities, you know, if it is just virtual um, to meet one-on-one -on -one with employees or have those, um, you know, regular staff meetings via Zoom. I think one I guess you could call it an unintended consequence of, you know, some of these more virtual environments and, you know, folks working from home is 
you actually get a window into someone's life that perhaps you didn't get before. I, I mean, people's, you know, kids running around in the background, dogs barking in the background. There's something almost humanizing about that. And, and at a time when we're all needing to be distant, um, it, it almost allows, it, it brings a little humanity to the screen because sometimes mm-hmm. things can dehumanize. I mean, social media is a great example of how, quickly and easily human beings can dehumanize each other just with a couple strokes of the keyboard. Um, but, you know, kind of getting to see what people's lives are like, even their homes. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of, it kind of provides almost, almost a sweet window into who people are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know if you guys experienced this. I sort of saw this evolution where at first, you know, we dressed up from the waist up for the call to look like we were being professional. And then over the course of time, it's like I would show up to meetings with my sweats on after being out walking for the last hour. You know, I mean, it, not that I would look really sloppy, but I mean, after a while, people just started dressing down, you know, and because it, it was just really what was going on. Um, and I showed up to a few meetings just after being out walking and I, I, you know, I wasn't in a tattered old shirt, but I mean, I was just in a shirt that I'd been walking in and, and I didn't really, it just seemed like it was okay after a while. I don't know if you guys experienced that or not. Yeah. For, for me, like I, uh, I, you know, right when this whole, you know, pandemic happened and they said we had to work, you know, from home, I thought I had it all, you know, figured out because, I used to work in this industry where I had to manage transportation. So I was a broker um, for ITS. And I remember like every time we broker a load, like we have to, it, whether the loads for it here in Reno or it's rather it's in a, you know, a different part of the country, you know, I had no interaction every day with these drivers. So I'm banking on them having to deliver the product on time without seeing them. So I was like, Oh, you know what? I think I, you know, I'll be all right. But when I, once we, were at home, I was like, man, like this is very overwhelming because mm-hmm. I had to play three roles. I had to play the father, I had to play a husband, and I had to play an employee. So you mesh all those things together and it's just like, you know, it, it's very, it can get very overwhelming. But uh, but at the end of the day, I also thought, you know, this was, a, you know, the whole pandemic was also was a great time to really get back some time that I had missed you know, with my family, um, you know, before this whole thing happened. I'll tell you, that was the, probably, in my opinion, the, the biggest blessing of this past yeah. year is time spent at home again with family and um, people that are special that we take for granted even sometimes, you know, and uh, I, I agree with you, Stefan, that's, uh, that's, that was a blessing. Yeah. One of the things that came up in our our research was um, to offer empathy and support, but avoid lowering any expectations of employees. Did anybody have any any challenges in in that way? I mean, we didn't. We are we're so project based. Um, there's there's very very busy days, and then there's days that you're not as busy and. I don't know. I've never been a babysitter. Melissa would be able to tell you, but I've never babysat my employees. I just said, you know, the work is the work is the work. And whether you do it in the morning or put it off till the afternoon, you know, get it done timely. But but we kind of all have skin in the game the way we're, we're, we receive our income. And so I don't know. For me, it just made me realize what an incredible team I have because they were able to juggle it all. I think too, it's also based on the industry. Um, every industry is different and yeah. some industries require, you know, time sensitive of time sensitive projects and the, expect, the expectation for those is probably pretty high. Um, for me, I was, you know, our expectation was super, super high. You know, we had to, you know, make sure that we're doing everything and you don't really get breaks. And I, I you know, for me, I missed that, you know, I, I really thought, you know, being at home was going to be, you know, really 
like it's going to be awesome because I but then I, I started realizing like man I, I actually miss going into the office you know and having that, <laughs> <laughs> having that uh that time to really like focus in on what I'm trying to do so uh yeah it, it I think it just depends on the industry yeah, yeah. what do you do Stefan uh, now I, I do uh, payment processing with uh, Gratis uh, Gratis Payments, um, and uh, it's been really it's been aw- awesome. But uh, before that, I was a, a broker for ITS. Oh, very good. Okay. Was Was Mike Crawford your supervisor? Yeah. <laughs> I go to full pedal, and so he just cracks me up. Yeah, he's a uh, he brings a. It, it's funny because like he creates a really cool dynamic in that the ITS culture where you know you're you have fun. It's it's really like a athlete centric uh company a lot of former athletes you know are, are there. i heard you have a slide yeah <laughs> we had a slide and we had like putt putt uh ping pong tables tvs everywhere so we had espn going all the time so yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah. well i i think for me one of the things that i took for granted is that you know it wasn't just being home from work and my workmates i was you know from my family and my friends. I was distanced from my social, my normal social activities and routines, like even on the weekends. And so it kind of all hit me at once where I was, you know, it it wasn't just, it wasn't just work. It was, it seemed like it was everything. It seemed like it was the world as what I knew it. And when I made that realization, it kind of, it crashed down on me and I wasn't sure kind of what to do and the ability to reach out to the folks that I work with and that I know and, and meet up with them meant everything to me. And so I, I'm sure that uh, there's other people that that's had that as well. So obviously, you know, having that, that connection is important. Um, Nicole, do you want to talk about how people yeah. can establish a cultural connection? So- this, this was an interesting concept to Melissa and I, um, because before we talked about um, cultural connections, that's really, I mean, when we're talking about employee engagement, we're talking about the culture of our organizations. It, we, we use the term cultural connection. Well, in the last year, it's kind of pivoted. Um, it's, it's really now establishing a connection culture and, and what that means is these are deliberate actions that we take to make employees feel that like they're supported. And with everything that we read and looked at, the key seemed to be helping them develop supportive, cooperative, and collaborative relationships with their peers, their supervisors, and the company leaders. And um, the, the companies that seem to try and make that connection at every level, um, were the ones that seem to be most um, successful in that. So, you know, when we're talking about that, that connection, what are some of the things that, that you guys, what are some of the ideas that you use to help connect and, and for folks to feel that connection? Hey guys, this is uh, Leslie Masterwell. I'm out of Greater Nevada Credit Union these days. <laughs> So, sorry, I was a little silent earlier. I had some background noise going on as we were talking about. Um, so, so for for our team, it's kind of an interesting thing being, you know, within an organization. Obviously, I'm not in necessarily the HR world, but I work in business development. So we have um, a lot of projects that kind of oversee multiple different um uh, parts of our organization. So trying to have that connection is very important for, for us, obviously as an organization as a whole, but also for what we do specifically. Um, so it was really, it's been interesting trying to navigate that because within our immediate unit, I think we've done a really good job. We've been so much more purposeful because we don't have that cooler talk and whatnot that we are trying to schedule those get togethers, those happy hours, those lunches, those virtual calls within our department as a whole. We've got monthly team meetings, um, but then we've started trying to incorporate other elements. So because 
work-life balance is a little bit more gray. Um, we're trying to incorporate, like we have um, a chat channel on Microsoft Teams that we call Greater Size. So it's a group of us that get together um, twice a day um, just to get up from our chairs and like exercise or take a walk or something. And it's kind of an opportunity to build some accountability um, between all of us to, to take that break away from necessarily our tasks at hand. Um, and we're trying to find a way to incorporate that into like our, our daily work as well, because one of your points earlier is um, trying to build that connectivity between each of our departments. Now we've had some of our groups step back because they have refocused what they're doing work-wise or, or project-wise. So that's something we're still trying to figure out, to be honest, but, but we're doing little inroads with things that maybe incorporate other you know, personal goals into our daily um, activities. I think that's that's great, Leslie. I mean, I think you know what's really important for for employers or management um, of these remote employees to kind of keep in mind is just, you know, it, it, you want to make sure that you're still, um, you know, rewarding the employees for for doing a great job, um, you know, making them, you know, value valuing the work that they're doing, um, um, and you know, kind of just helping them have that that, you know, regular check-in so that they continue to feel engaged and not just, you know, out in left field, you know, maybe floundering a little bit, so. I, I loved, Leslie, what you had to share because I, I think the big headline is, is finding a way to create shared experience. And, you know, when we have these moments, you know, we, we don't have the water cooler anymore, which, you know, to be honest, I don't know if I've ever actually gathered around a water cooler, but that's just the, that's just the euphemism we have, um, you know, gathering around that, that metaphorical water cooler or going out to lunch with someone or just passing someone in the hallway if they look like they're having a bad day and asking how they're doing. I, creating, creating space for that shared experience is so important. Well, in a physical workplace, it was it was a lot easier to gauge engagement or measure, you know, who was engaged and who wasn't. And that was one of the first things that I thought of when we kind of really went to a virtual uh, workplace is, is I, I had to be a whole lot better at reading body language from a screen to, to you know, gauge and measure if, if people were really, really engaged with, with the whole work environment. So yeah, uh, I can totally relate to that. <laughs> well, so there, I, you know, in, in the, the human resources realm, we, we hear engagement tossed around a lot. And I think I just said it probably six times in the last one, uh, <laughs> paragraph that I, I, I was talking about, but um, I, I think there's many, many different perspectives and definitions on what employee engagement is. Um, you know, and I, I thought about it, the, the virtual happy hour, just about everybody I talked to has, has put together a couple of those. And in the beginning, they were so much fun and so ingenuitive, but there's only, only so many, you know, and there's only so many topics. So, you know, I, I, I really want to, um, reach out and have have folks share what are some of the creative things that you did to drive the employee engagement and and it can be both from a, a, a productive um, perspective or just having people be engaged I love the greater size that is just an, an excellent idea um, but what are some of the other things that you guys have found that are successful I can tell you also, um, as I say, I, you know, I actually, before we did this, I, I talked with a lot of my clients that I know have had, um, you know, virtual staff, you know, pretty much this, this, this whole past year and uh, are continuing to do so. Um, but some of the fun ideas that came out from some of my clients were um, that they, you know, of course, did the virtual happy hour wine tastings, um, but also virtual coffee breaks um, throughout the day so that people could just kind of take, a, you know, five, 10 minute step away from, you know, the, the, the regular work and just kind of engage and, you know, bounce ideas um, off each other. Um, or during their like staff meetings, they would have um, um, an employee do a show and tell so they could, you know, 
show either something from their, their home or, you know, introduce their kids or their dog, um, those kind of things. Um, some uh, did one-on-one -on -one video uh, chats with um, the owner um, like once a month, which I thought was cool. Um, there were people that did, um, they did uh, like their Christmas party, had to do their, their holiday party virtual. And so they, um, you know, did some fun things like did online trivia games with prizes that they would mail out to the winners. Um, so there's been all kinds of, you know, creativity through all this. So, um, you know, if anyone has any ideas, I think it's, it's fun to hear about what these other companies are doing. So then maybe we can incorporate it, um, you know, in our own industries. One fun thing that our company did, um, we have a lot of different offices all over the country and the corporate office asked us all to have our employees take pictures of what they look like working from home. And there was, um, so we had a few people in our office that um, took pictures of their little setups at home, you know, with the, usually it's kids sitting at the table with mom and mom's on the computer and the kids are on their Zoom calls and you know, everyone's kind of crazy and um, the dog's in the corner. And so everyone took pictures of the office, of their little home offices. And we sent them all into our corporate office and they developed a little, like a movie slideshow of, of all the employees. So I think people got some recognition out of it. And um, we also got to see that, you know, hey, we're not the only ones that, you know, have this crazy thing going on at home. It's I'm in the same boat with a whole lot of other people. So it was kind of interesting. Awesome. Um, Leslie here again, you know, it's fun. I've got to share uh, Greater Nevada, obviously we're super privileged to have like a team dedicated towards people engagement, um, but it really is a group effort from all of our, all of our staff. And it's been kind of fun to see things kind of develop from you know, corporate structure as well as from individual department and team structures. So some of the things that, that we've seen is um, some grassroots kind of develop like um, ideas about like dress up days. So we've had some fun like wear crazy hat day or wear, you know, your, your floral shirt day you know, your Hawaiian shirt. And some of it was just to be kind of ridiculous and out there and kind of like reminisce from those high school days that you had those like spirit weeks. Um, but then outside of that, um, We've had a number of like different competitions. You know, we have an internet, so we do have a platform that we're able to communicate with all of our team members on. Um, but with that, we've really utilized that uh, to be able to get out information about different things that all of our departments are doing, which has been really cool. So we had over um, St. Patty's Day, it was like, um, there was a pot of gold that was randomly placed, you know, in our internet, different places, and it was to be able to bring highlights to some new features or new programs that are coming on or, or things that, you know, we really wanted to drive some communications on. Um, also, our team, our engagement team initiated a, an all staff wide um, meeting once a month, um, and they highlight different um, employees of the organization. So it's anywhere from, you know, an interview with one of our vice presidents to an interview with one of our MSRs or our, I should say our teller line kind of things, you know, and getting to know individuals since we aren't interacting in person as often as we would have been. Uh, they're really trying to create that that function with, you know, over 300 employees, that's kind of hard to do, but, you know, they're definitely um, chipping away at that and being able to introduce, um, you know, our different staff members to the organization as a whole. And I think that's really been helpful, just that get to know you element, since we don't have that occur in that virtual space anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think one of the ideas that I really liked, uh, Melissa, and if you touched on this, I apologize for repeating it, but I love the idea of the virtual coffee breaks kind of, you know, kind of taken place where, whereas maybe it was around the water cooler and people would take their breaks at the same time. So it, it, keeping that going in a, in a virtual sense. Mm -hmm. So I love all these ideas and we've talked about how we can collaborate, but um, what do we do when there's challenges? I think, I think Leslie, the, the comments you made in chat earlier bring up a great point about distraction. Um, and I think that's, that's a huge, a huge challenge is, 
you know, when you're on a screen, suddenly, you know, you're not just having a face-to-face conversation with someone, quote unquote, but you've also got your email going that you can see while you're having this conversation and uh, ways that perhaps we weren't typically multitasking, we're multitasking now. I mean, we typically wouldn't, you know, have a face-to-face conversation with someone and connect with someone while answering an email. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> at the same time. And now we're facing an environment where we've got, we've got tons of irons in the fire at, at once. And that's not even bringing into, bringing into view the fact that we've got kids at home and we've got pets that are, you know, wanting our attention and so excited we're there. So I guess my question is, you know, what are, what are some ways to quell distractions uh, at least as best we can? Nicole, do you have some ideas on that? I mean, I think definitely, um, you know, some of the the challenges that we've uncovered is is definitely distraction, uh, as Christine has mentioned. Um, I know even just on Zoom calls, you know, I'm always kind of looking, I'm like, oh, like staring at, you know, the background and not really listening to what people are saying, um, you know, and the lack of, of, of face-to-face and, um, you know, having it's a little bit harder for me to motivate at home too, um, just because there are so many distractions. Um, so I, I definitely, I feel like I get more work done in, um, in the office. And so, you know, how are ways that, you know, we can kind of, um, um, jump over those hurdles like distraction and reduce motivation. I was really insecure about it when we first moved to a virtual, um, I, I was really insecure about, oh my gosh, what if my dog barks? Um, oh, oh my gosh, what if, and, and I, and I, you know, my distractions, I had um, technical distractions up the wazoo. Um, and you can see I'm still having technical uh, <laughs> distractions, but I, so I, I had to first, I had to like make sure, and I, I would, I would get so embarrassed if I couldn't get on or I couldn't get the the audio to work or the video looked weird and you know my home office I have a window behind my desk and so I had to like really look at the lighting and close the blinds and and make make it an environment you know the environment counts Um, I have a little Yorkie that wants to bark at absolutely everything and sometimes her barking can be very piercing and so I would stick her in a room on the other side of the house but then I could hear I could hear her through the vents and I would worry, gosh, can everybody else hear? And so I, I had to like, I had to be, I had to be deliberate about everything, but I also had to like relax a little bit because then I would see other people and I would hear their dogs bark or I would hear a, a kid in the background. And, and I had to like, just kind of calm down a little bit and relax a little bit and say, you know what? Nobody's perfect. It is that humanizing thing. And it's okay. I, you know, if it's, completely distracting. I, I can apologize for it. Um, one time I heard, I had the doorbell rang and I, it surprised me and I completely lost my train of thought and didn't know what to do. Do I answer it? Do I not answer it? What do I do? So I, I think we've all, you know, a, a year into this, we've all kind of figured out the things that work for us. And for me, it was kind of moving past that real feeling so sensitive about it. Did anybody else experience something similar? Uh, no, I, but I was I was going to say one of the challenges that I faced uh, through this whole thing was uh, the Zoom fatigue. You know, we uh, uh, there were so many. I mean, you have a constant Zoom calls, and I'm just like, man, like sometimes you just like I, I don't really want to be on a Zoom call. You know, every meeting. So I I, I know that's a, a big that was a big challenge. So you know making, I, for me, I had made sure that I was taking the break, the breaks necessary, you know, going outside, seeing something, cause you're, you're glued to the screen 24 seven. So, you know, maybe going outside, getting a walk, get a fresher breath of air. Uh, uh, yeah, that was what I was doing. Absolutely. You know, one thing that um, I, I've, I've seen some success with for employers to establish is um, what they call a remote work playbook. Um, so you kind of set standards, you know, with the employees, you know, determine what their working hours are. So set what hours they're, they're technically online and, and when they can kind of take that break, that much needed break, as you said, um, to step away, 
um, for the, the evening or, you know, whenever that is, um, or to take those breaks throughout the day. Um, and then of course, as we said, just have those regular um, online meetings, whether it's weekly or monthly or, you know, between certain departments or with the whole, you know, team, um, but just making sure that um, you're regu regularly checking in with your team members just to kind of keep um, everyone on task. Um, and then um, establishing the proper communication channels. So um, whether that's, you know, through a Teams platform or Zoom or text or email, um, you know, just, you know, if there's different types of communication that different people respond to better, or, you know, if you've, you're Zoom overload and you want to establish a different means, um, you know, that, that might be a, a nice break for the employees. Um, and then, you know, having someone to reach out to if you are having technical issues or troubleshooting any technical issues. So um, those were four, um, you know, good um, suggestions for that remote um, work playbook for employers to, um, you know, maybe incorporate so that people know, you know, how to work virtually. So to pivot away from the the challenges. What what were some of the things that uh, it, it, things that you felt um, like were the most important drivers of success for you in overcoming those challenges? I think for me, at least as it pertains to virtual meetings in particular, and like and trying to avoid that overload. Uh, of so much stimuli at one time, you've got a meeting going on and then you got your email going off and you got texts coming in. The three most important words have been do not disturb. <laughs> that, you know, I, I turn my notification, when I have a meeting, I, I turn my notifications off, at least as insofar as I remember, turn my email off even, close everything down because I normally, I, I probably wouldn't be reaching for those things if I was having a face-to-face -face meeting with someone, if I was going to lunch with someone, if I was, um, you know, if I was sitting across a, a conference table from someone, I wouldn't want to be answering emails the whole time or, you know, distracted by my texts the whole time. And so I think like treating, treating Zoom meetings as much as I can, like an in-person meeting, um, and, you know, doing whatever it takes to do that, um, has been, has been really helpful. And now again, that doesn't necessarily address other, other stimuli that aren't screen related, but at least as it, as it pertains to screens, I feel like that's been really helpful. No, I think that's a great point. I know I'm constantly, I get, you know, sidetracked, you know, during meetings, um, you know, with my cell phone going off or, you know, text coming through, like you said, so. Uh, so I think that is a really good way to maybe stay more focused, you know, in a meeting where, like, like you said, because you wouldn't be doing that in a face-to-face -face meeting. So it's a very good point. Another a tool that I've kind of recently started utilizing a little bit more also when it comes to like Zoom overload is I'm scheduling, you know, back when you're driving to a meeting, you had that time to like prepare your kind of thought process or recap after a meeting when you're even just driving between meetings. So now I'm almost mm -hmm. scheduling fake driving time before and after a meeting. So I don't have those back to back. So I have that time to process and recap and make sure that I can consolidate those notes um, so that I don't feel like I'm just like overwhelmed. And by the end of the day, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have all of these meetings I need to follow up on. Um, and I've kind of built in that time. I think that's really helped in the last couple months. Um, I, I love that. I think that's a great idea. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, on my end, you know, I think honestly the reverse is kind of true because, you know, before all this, I was running from client to client to meeting to meeting to meeting. And I was just, you know, exhausted. And then I'd still have all this work to do um, by the time I got back. So that's one, been one of the nice things about all this is that, you know, I do have, you know, I'm not spending that time driving so I can get caught up on emails that I'm missing during the meetings and things like that. So, um, but I think, uh, you know, to your point that, you know, it's important to schedule those, those, those breaks between the meetings, because otherwise you can just be back to back all day and then it's the same as me running around town. Yeah. So. I, I noticed that I was challenged also with, I, I, I realized early on, you know what, I, I need to, I, I don't want to schedule a meeting just to meet. I want to be deliberate about that. And I'm going to manage those meetings as very best as I can to, to start and to end on time because then that, you know, time is precious. And before, you know, you could go over in a meeting, you're like, okay, but I, you know, with 
with um, respect to the Zoom fatigue, I, I was very um, much more diligent than I was before about really managing the meetings and, and um, keeping things focused. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, um, you know, because, and I think that's the, another uh, caveat of the Zoom thing is like, you can, I know with a basic like Zoom plan, like, you know, if you have like more, you only have that 30 minute window. So I took advantage of that. I was like, you know what, hey, this is 30 minutes, that's it. You know, Wrap that's, it up. <laughs> that's it, we're done. So um, I use that to my advantage. And I mean, it, it's, it also helped too, because like you get what you need to say out, right, like right in that time limit. So you don't have to like, you know, continue the meeting or have that, you know, be afraid of going over. So um, just getting everything you, you need to say out. And it also teaches you how to kind of manage a conversation, you know, like, you know, from the beginning to the end, okay, like, in the beginning, you should be doing like a, you know, like a warm introduction, like, how you doing, but, you know, you know, what's new, you know, that and then go straight into, you know, kind of having smooth transitions uh, throughout the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So with that, I mean, <laughs> we just, Nicole and I love this slide because this, this is like my life. This is, that's been my life the past two, past year. <laughs> I don't well, have a cat, I don't have a cat though. <laughs> oh, I just noticed the cat, cat Melissa. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, on behalf of Melissa and I, um, we just really want to thank you for your time and your passion and for, for, um, being, you know, being courageous and sharing your ideas and your insight. I, I think, yeah, that I think it sums it up so perfectly that, you know, we're at the end of the day, we're all in this together. We're all struggling in some way, shape or form or another. And, and we're all, and we're all humans and kind of remembering that at the end of the day it, it is, I think, paramount to success and being able to move forward. So thank you. Thank Any you. Questions? Thank you to everyone. I feel like we're, we were all teaching each other and that was a fantastic experience and a great way to, to close out the business 101 series as well, that we are all in this together. Uh, thank you, uh, Nicole and Melissa. Thank you, Valerie, Leslie, Stefan. Um, it's been great. Um, it's been great to see you. Great to interact a little bit. Um, any closing thoughts or, or questions before we sign off for the day? All right. Well, with that, I, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Get some sunshine. It's beautiful out there. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank right. you guys right. so much. Thanks, everyone.